Welcome everyone to another one of our free Friday community classes. This week we are talking about the elf, the fae, the good folk, or rather talking around them, as is generally the smart way to approach these things. And really the point of the class this week is to talk about how whatever approach we may have to plant spirit work, we are most definitely working in the realm of the good folk, of the neighbors, of the gentry. So when I think about these different uh, non-human or more than human spirits, beings that we see throughout the lore, sometimes even explicitly found in plant lore, what we commonly see is that they are presented as protectors of the land, protectors of spaces, of areas, of specific trees or gardens sometimes, and a lot of the taboo lore that surrounds the fae, the elf, is uh, comes up when we're talking about a particular tree being cut down or a road being laid through an area that is sacred to these beings. And so we see a link, we see a weaving between their world and the world of the plant spirits in the lore consistently age after age. And so I think it's an important bit of sidebar to acknowledge them. Personally, I would not consider myself uh, a scholar by any means on these beings. In fact, I feel like I know less and less about them the more I experience of them, but I do think it's important to be aware of them and to understand that when we are working with plants, whether in a garden or out in the wild, we are in the natural territory, the natural terrain of these particular beings. Oftentimes in the lore, we will see that the fairy folk have pathways. They have tracks that they take from one place to another. Sometimes that's every single night. Sometimes it's between the seasons that they move around from space to space depending on the time of the year. And that when we impede these tracks, bad things will happen. When we get in their way, they cause us trouble. When we stay out of their way or when we approach with caution and respect, then uh, ideally nothing happens or occasionally good things happen uh, because of our interaction with them. So. When we are in these spaces, again, even spaces that we have cultivated in our gardens uh, or especially out in the wild, we have to be mindful of the essential nature of our present is, is that of guest. That we are spending a very small fraction of an amount of time in these spaces in comparison to the persons who live there all the time, right? So even in our own gardens, we're not out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're out, we're out there, you know, a handful of hours a week total, doing our work, taking care of our garden, stewarding the plants, all of that. Meanwhile, there are people who live out there all the time. That's their forever home. And so when we come out, when we put ourselves into that uh, headspace of being a guest in these spaces, I think for me anyway, that helps me behave appropriately, right? That when I don't walk out with a sense of entitlement or ownership, uh, or that I somehow deserve to do whatever I want to do, regardless of the impact that that make uh, on the space and on the people who live there, it sort of gears me into the right perspective automatically. So I like to always remember and pay honor to the spirits who live in a place all the time before I go out and do my one hour of whatever I'm doing and then leave, right? And this becomes uh, explicitly important when we encounter the fae, uh, the elf. When we encounter animals and insects, you know, um, we should always be respectful, but oftentimes, unless we've uh, offended the wrong kind of creature, they kind of just go a different direction. You know, occasionally there are animals who will fight back and be uh, angry about our presence and sometimes rightfully so and chase us out or worse. But with the good folk, um, they have the ability and we have uh, plenty of folklore 
to back up the fact that they will not take things lightly. That if we uh, come into their spaces, we come into the places that are sacred to them, into their haunts, the places where they uh, spend time or live or do their various festivities or the places that they use to get from one place to another or the trees or groves or hedgerows that they consider sacred um, and do the things that sometimes humans are wont to do, which is uh, whatever we want, bad things happen. And I think that in the modern world, we have become divorced from this cause and effect aspect of living in a world filled with persons, right? That we don't always ascribe the troublesome things that happen in our life after our behaviors in uh, space because uh, we're really divorced from that pattern. Whereas our ancestors, people uh, who've gone before us and in many cultures still right now, experience that when they behave inappropriately in a space, there is a reaction from that space. And that's how we learn what we can and cannot do in a particular space, right? So um, when I walk through, you know, these different areas and these different practices from just being in a space to doing ritual in a space to harvesting plants from a space. There is always a really mindful, intentional respect given to all of the beings who live in that place and a real nod of respect and gratitude, especially to the Fae, the fairy folk. Um, for me, as somebody whose spiritual path is very much centered around the green realm, around sorceress work with the plants, it's very important for me to try my best to stay on their good side or, you know, even just neutral if I can, because many, many times throughout my journey, I have experienced them as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, as protectors of the plant spirits. And because their narrative is so tightly bound with that of the plants, uh, it makes sense for those of us who work with plants to have a good relationship with spirits of place, with the protectors of space, as we uh, try to have good relationships with the plants themselves. There's no way, and I think this is what this all boils down to, there's no way to go into any space, again, whether it's controlled established garden or wild space, and work with a plant, approach the plants, and especially harvest plant materials without impacting a whole other reality of beings who live there, from the corporeal beings of insect and animal and other plants, uh, all the way to the non-corporeal or subtle corporeal beings of the fae and the elf. So for me, uh, most especially when I'm in a wild space, if I am going to harvest uh, or take some plant material or perform a ritual that will lay some energetic pattern in the place or will create some, some ripple, you know, for a few minutes or a few hours or forever, I'm always aware that I need the consent of the plant spirits, but I also need the consent and ideally the support of the spirits of place. So those divinations that I do in those spaces, uh, divinations that you'll see me do in other classes, are just as much about asking the spirits of place for welcome and stating my intention and making a promise that while I'm there, I will be as good a steward to that land as I can be, that I will try to leave it as good or better than I found it, and that I'm asking for, uh, at minimum, peace between the realms while I do my work, and at best their blessings and maybe even their participation, which does happen sometimes. So um, I wanted this particular class to be one that inspires us to think and connect a deeper way to our perspectives and experiences of animism. It's really easy to be an armchair animist, right? To think, oh yes, uh, the world is filled with persons and I believe in spirits and ancestors and fae and you know all of these different beings, uh, but to go out and encounter them is another thing entirely. And to behave respectfully to persons who you may not perceive is really 
a really profound sacrifice, a profound act of devotion to the world, right? That even though I can't see you and I'm not experiencing you in a very sensory way right now, I trust that you are there. I see the effects of your presence and I will behave accordingly. And as I say, oftentimes the plants tell their friends, right? So when we step into spaces consistently in this mindset, behaving appropriately and respectfully, the more we step into those spaces, the more we are welcomed into deeper layers of those spaces, the more the spaces will reveal the depth of themselves to us. That when we walk through uh, a meadow, instead of getting just one surface level presentation of that space over time, uh, we will get access to deeper and deeper levels, whether that is having encounters with the various animals who live there, getting sightings of you know, birds or beasts or insects, uh, to having more profound personal experiences with the numinous nature of these places, with the inherent wisdom that exists there through the non-corporeal or subtle corporeal beings who call those places home. So it's part of my spiritual practice to walk respectfully in these places because I think it's the right thing to do and also because it has proven to peel the onion for me, to give me deeper and deeper access as these beings uh, start to see me as somebody who doesn't act a fool uh, as much as I possibly can when I come into these areas and that when I come in and work with plants and do ritual and harvest or whatever, that a great amount of uh, sincere gratitude is given to those plants and also you know I'm doing some divination or some journey work to get some kind of permission and consent but that I'm also doing the same for that sort of collective grouping of persons who call that place home and work with that place so uh, not supposed to be necessarily a dire warning by any means but my hope is that this will get your gears turning and inspire you to think about ways that you work with the spirits of place, the protectors of space, and those different beings who are not human that have an equal amount of relationship with the plants that we work with in their own way. So if you have some ideas on this or have some experiences with it, I would love to hear uh, down in the comments below if you want to get access to uh, more advanced classes, courses, guided plant spirit journeys. Come hang out with us over on the Patreon where all the good stuff is. And until then, peace and plenty. I'll see you next week.